What's up guys, how's it going? I'm your host Alf, welcome back to the channel, and today we'll be doing something a little bit different. This is entirely unscripted, we are simply doing a frame-by-frame -frame analysis of the Pikmin 4 reveal trailer within the Nintendo Direct, so we'll also be looking at uh, Mr. Miyamoto's comments later on, and I do believe there's a couple of screenshots later in this, but this is just a purely natural um, analysis of the reveal trailer. I will try to make this as entertaining as possible because I don't usually do unscripted content. Here we go. Okay, so uh, here we go. The first shot is fully lit up. Uh, we'll notice that most of this just looks like pretty standard Pikmin fare, which is going to be a pretty common theme in this trailer, but I think we do have some new information to comment on. Um, so first, you know, in the foreground, you can see these flowers right here. There's a butterfly, you know, there's this rock, there's some dirt, um, pretty standard stuff. We have um, these weathered, like it's a weathered brick path looking thing over here. It looks pretty old, but I do not think that we typically see that sort of stuff in Pikmin. You'll also notice that, um, I don't know if this is just texturing, again, this, not again, but just um, this version of the trailer within the Direct isn't the qu highest quality version, so I, I don't know if this is just texturing or if this is actually hitboxes of stuff, but the floor looks to have a lot more divots and dents and just little potholes that are naturally there in the real world a lot on that small scale, but just haven't appeared in older Pikmin games due to, I assume, technical limitations. But we do have this brick floor down here that we don't see a lot of in the other Pikmin games, and we could have a more detailed floor to the world that we're in, because the reality of it is, in the real world, there are a lot of tiny imperfections in the floor, but everything's just completely smooth in the other Pikmin games. So that could be very interesting. Another thing that I notice in this opening shot that we really don't see in other Pikmin games is we have in the background some potted plants. Especially this one is catching my attention because not only is it a potted plant, but it looks like there's just sort of like the one plant in the pot that's supposed to be there. You can see I'm going around it with my mouse. And we don't see that in other Pikmin games, I don't think. The way I've always viewed it, at least, is, yeah, there's some man-made structures, there's bricks, there's pots, there's little walls, but it gives the impression that it is the world in the distant future, quite possibly after humanity has left the scene, right? But seeing this, a potted plant that's not overgrown, there aren't visibly a bunch of weeds in it, there are potted plants, makes me think that this might take place at a different spot in the timeline, closer to the existence of humans, or possibly it takes place in the same part of the timeline, but they're in a part of the world that is still inhabited by active humans, which could be a really interesting theme of this game. But let's move on to the next part of the trailer. Okay, uh, the sun is coming up. The lighting looks very beautiful in this trailer. I don't know how indicative of that the game is. I think I said that sentence wrong, but you know what I mean. But this trailer overall, you can definitely see an improvement in the graphics. It doesn't look incredible or anything compared to the other games, that is. I mean, I think the old games looked pretty incredible sometimes, especially Pikmin 3. But it really, there's a noticeable boost in quality, and I appreciate that. I think Pikmin 4 is going to take Pikmin 3's slot as Nintendo's most beautiful game, in my opinion. Except maybe Breath of the Wild. I'm not, I'm not totally sure on that ranking, actually. But... On we press. The sun is coming out. Beautiful thing to see. The butterfly flies away. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it on this right here, but you could kind of see in the butterfly's body, it didn't look quite like a normal butterfly. I know that there's a lot of weird creatures in the Pikmin universe, even ones that don't necessarily get interacted with like enemies, but it almost looked like the body of a Pikmin on that butterfly. I don't think that's going to be significant. I do think this is just a butterfly. But that was interesting. And again, you know, as the lighting reveals, you get a clear view of these very distinct potted plants, these bricks. You can see the world just looks a little bit fresher, for lack of a better word. I think I just hit the desk there. I'm sorry. It, just, it looks a bit fresher than it did in previous Pikmin games. And I think that's going to be a very, I don't know, just interesting thing that I think might be different about this. I think we really will see more human stuff in this Pikmin. Okay, as we crossfade into the next shot here, we see some bulb orbs in the foreground, obviously, but yet again, even more strongly than in the last one, we see that human influence on this. Up in the background, you have a fence that still looks completely intact. You got 
some kind of gate maybe up in the background to the left over here. You have a brick enclosed garden it looks like. Bricks to the side, but obviously in the foreground of this shot we have a bench, a real human bench, and I don't think we see that distinctly of human structures in any other Pikmin game, right? I mean, there's the bricks in Pikmin 3 especially, there were those electric walls, I think those were in Pikmin 2 actually, also, but I mean, this just, it's not mossy even, it's not, there's no rust around these legs, this is just a bench, I mean, this looks nicer than a lot of benches that I can think of in real life. It looks fresh, it looks human, and that is really fascinating to me. I'm so curious to see just how that sort of thing will play into the new game. And then we've got a couple of small bulb orbs down here. Uh, once again, more flowers and stuff, some weeds. And um, it, you can also see there's more of a contour to the land than usual. It's not just triangles of the texture, however they made it. There's a slope over here, there's something peeking up over here, there's like a little rim. You can kind of see it down where the corner of like this leg of the bench is. It's really quite something. I'm so curious to see how the new graphics of the game will play out as well and how the technical advancements will play into like just all the little curves and contours that are over the ground that you never really think about, but they've also been very absent from the older games and I'm really curious to see some of that. Uh, moving along. All right, the ball board, he's walking back, you know, with his little buddy. Then we cut into this next shot. We see a clock, all right? More of a stopwatch, but no, it's a pocket watch, sorry. It is a clock, it's a small clock. And that's interesting, because I'm pretty sure that this clock is also featured later in the trailer. We'll get to that, obviously, later in the trailer, but it's on a fence, still painted, which indicates that this is not completely post-human. Maybe the other Pikmin games weren't completely post-human, but... That's just so fascinating to me that the world is still intact. You have this polished gold clock. This is clearly not weathered any, in any way. I mean, I know gold doesn't really tarnish. That's one of its things that makes it so valuable. But it's this clock. And you can see, if I let it play for a second, the clock is running. The clock is... Time is passing. And that's just... What is this clock for? <laughs> is this like just the new icon that they'll use to tell the passage of time that'd be kind of weird i don't i don't see why they would make a roman numeral hand clock the way to tell time in this 2023 video game but it's on this thing it's nailed to the fence and it's ticking the clock is ticking which i think is super fascinating and i, I wonder how this clock will come into play i'll probably talk about that more when it shows up later um, you know, these bricks are nice. You can see more contours to the path. There's a gap between these bricks. I don't know how much we'll be able to interact with this little ledge of bricks. There are clusters of small pebbles down over here, as you can see. That actually looks like it might be a repeated texture. Um, but that's fine. You know, uh, some dandelions. I don't remember seeing dandelions in old games, but that's not significant, and I'm sure they were there. I just forget about them. Um, we have a large ball orb here sleeping. Classic Pikmin stuff. You gotta keep the classics. I'm really just trying to comment on the different stuff at this moment. But yeah. So that's that's this shot. I think that's about all I had to comment on on this. The clock, the stopwatch, sorry, the pocket watch is really interesting. Uh, could be some kind of item. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how that's gonna work. And then we hear the trumpet kick in. Pikmin, trademark. Got a new logo. Uh, I don't believe we've seen the, like, green block letters with the flower acting as the hole in the P. That's nice. We'll see that later in this clip as well. Pikmin. We fade to white. It moves over. And we got these Pikmin running in. Now, what we'll notice when these Pikmin come running in is there are no bulb Pikmin. That's a joke. That's not significant at all. That's just, we'll see that later. That's just how they form the symbol. There are no bulbs in the symbol. But what we also notice is that there are only red, yellow, and blue Pikmin. I don't think the lack of white, purple, rock, and winged Pikmin is going to be an indication of how the game will work. I, I don't think they would go back to just red, yellow, and blue, but that could be really interesting. Um, this could act as sort of a reimagining of the series, as I've talked about in the past, as Nintendo has done in the past with things like Animal Crossing and Breath of the Wild. It would be interesting to see them return fully to only the original three colors of Pikmin and just change a lot about the rest of the gameplay, because... In the past, the new Pikmin types have been interesting, but they've almost been more of a novelty. Like, 
Rock and Winged Pikmin, I really did like. Those are some of my favorite Pikmin types. The Winged Pikmin shook things up a lot with how they could carry stuff. The Rock Pikmin broke things, but they were just sort of derivative of Purple Pikmin. And especially White and Purple Pikmin just really did not amount to much in their game. You know, that's one of the things that I hated the most about Pikmin 2. I don't hate Pikmin 2, I just, that was one of my least favorite things, was that purple and white Pikmin did not contribute that much to the gameplay. There were only like two items that you needed purple Pikmin to carry the extra weight of. Um, I mean, white Pikmin really ended up just being a method to get rid of those poison spouts. So I think it would be interesting if they knocked it back down to the original three Pikmin types, really simplified it, and then they really made them useful. Like, interesting to the point where the game would not be the same if you didn't have one of the three Pikmin types. I think that would be really interesting if they sort of went back to the series' roots and expanded on that in terms of Pikmin types and what they bring to the table. But, um, maybe they won't. Might just be talking out of my butt there. I am talking out of my butt there. That's what this entire video is, but that's fine. Uh, so we'll watch. They're bringing the logo together. Very nice little logo. Cute little Pikmin running around. You love to see it. Uh, sort of an orange twinkle in the number four, releasing in 2023. Obviously, I was hoping for 2022, um, because, you know, when Pikmin 3 Deluxe was announced, I believe it was just a month or two, right, before it actually came out. But this is okay, too. I mean, this is a higher-profile game. I like that they're announcing it. It could be a year in advance or more. I don't know. It could be late 2023. That really scares me. But I like that they're announcing it so far in advance, just because that gives it the feeling of a higher profile release. I don't know the sales numbers of Pikmin 3 Deluxe, but I'm really hoping that this game becomes a bigger deal than we've ever seen in Pikmin before. It becomes more valuable to the series' reputation, and that it, it just provides a wider fan base so that the games make more money, and ultimately, the selfish reason that I care about this is so that they make more Pikmin games. Nintendo, I'll pay you as many $60 as you want. Just keep making Pikmin games. I'll pay full price every time. I don't care. Can I afford it? No, but I'm gonna do it. Okay. Um, sorry, by the way. I, I keep feeling like I'm hitting the table. I'm sorry if I'm spiking out the audio with little bumps. This was a very impromptu thing. I'm so sorry. Okay, um, let's continue. That's right. Pikmin 4 will launch in 2023. We won't be showing any gameplay today. However, you'll be able to play like no gameplay this footage from the Pikmin's perspective near the ground. But this is one of the bigger things because this looks like, as you can see from the fence in the background, the clock in the same spot, the giant bulb orb, and these blocks over here, they're exactly the same. The same rock formations. It's all the same as it was earlier in the trailer. And so this is a new angle of the same shot, so we get a lot out of this shot, actually. For one thing, this looks like Brittany. It could be a different pink young lady. Um, I don't remember, excuse me, I don't remember the back of her hair looking like that. But this, I do think this is Brittany, so that would indicate some narrative continuation of Pikmin 3, based on the fact that, you know, those are the Hakatations. No, not the Hakatations. The Kopites, I'm sorry. Kopai, not Hakatate. I'm a fake fan. Please don't cancel me for that, guys, please. No, um, but yeah, we have in this shot, again, only red, yellow, and blue Pikmin. There are no other Pikmin types. So I'm not saying that this is a confirmation of the back down to the original three Pikmin types theory, but it's supporting evidence. Maybe they just didn't want to give too much away. Like, obviously, red, yellow, and blue will be present in every Pikmin game until the end of time, probably. But maybe this is another way of them hinting that there will only be the original three Pikmin types once again. I don't know. Uh, fighting a giant ball orb, looking pretty standard over here. Uh, we do get to see this other angle. He says we'll be playing from the player's perspective, or from the character's perspective, down on the ground. Which I think is going to be a really good thing for the series. Because all the other Pikmin games have been like three-dimensional, obviously. But they've been more from a top-down angled perspective. Right? There's less of that, um, like, I, I don't know if it was just designed to make you feel more in control because Pikmin is a strategy game, but this angle, if this angle were being shown, is their way of explaining what they mean by from the character's angle, and we're going to get to 
look up at things, that is going to be really cool, I think. It might make it harder to see everything, but just being able to be on the ground with the characters and the Pikmin and to look up at the sky like you can see the sky. You can never see the sky in Pikmin. I don't know if you ever actually can in a single level. Um, that could be really incredible and interesting. And it might be even more evidence to the smaller like scale of the Pikmin themselves because the Pikmin in this shot, I don't like this isn't a gameplay shot necessarily, but that's what I'm assuming they mean by this. The Pikmin look very big in this. So I don't this is not evidence in favor of them adding more Pikmin types. This would indicate that you can have less Pikmin in your party. Not like that they would lower their own 100 Pikmin limit. I don't see why they would do that. But only three kinds of Pikmin. The smaller scale you get, making the player feel smaller like the character, which I think is genius, by the way. Doing that really adds a layer of just interest to it and intimacy with the Pikmin. It adds a layer of depth even though there might only be these three Pikmin types, and I really think this new angle is cool. Also, this is, I think, the third shot of three that we actually get of the game, but in the background, more than ever, you can see that human influence. This looks like, th this in the background that I'm hovering over with my mouth, mouse, this blue pot, that, that might be plastic. I don't think there's ever been plastic in Pikmin. I could be wrong, that could be like glazed terracotta or something, but we have this plant very distinctly in a pot placed there by a human, no extra plants. There's an easel or something, whatever this is. Are these like containers of boxes? Are they like gardening compost bins? I don't know. We have colored bricks down here. This looks like some kind of crate. I don't know what this little label is. There's like a spout back here. There's steps leading up to a gate. I don't know if you could go up there, but that would be really cool. If there's more verticality in this, that would be amazing, which is something that I see indicated in the other shots of this trailer. Like, if you go back, there are little hills and bumps and bricks and levels of stuff. And I think that's super interesting, because that could be another thing that comes from this changed angle. The perspective of being down on the ground, they add verticality to the game. This could really be a reimagining of Pikmin, and I think that's so valuable and interesting. You love to see it. I mean, that's one of the biggest things I talked about in my old Pikmin 4 Hopes video. I might make a new Hopes for Pikmin 4 after this video, because I'm really fascinated by this game. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you want to see my Hopes for Pikmin 4 Part 3. No, but, um, I just think it's so... I'm sorry, I just think it's, I don't, I can't think of the word. Profound, exciting. Exciting that they're willing to take a big change in the series. Because the structure of the games, the level design of the games, changed a lot between Pikmin 1, 2, and 3. Those are all very different games, I think. But mechanically, they were all almost identical. Very top-down, very get your Pikmin over here, do this, this, and this, all that good stuff. And they were so fun. Obviously, I'm obsessed with Pikmin 3 to this day. But I just think it's so fascinating that they could be changing the way Pikmin types work, they could be changing the verticality, they could be, they are changing the perspective, it sounds like. And I think that's really interesting. And narratively, all this new human stuff in the trailer, that just gets me so excited for where this game could go. It really, really does. Okay, let's move on. I also made a new t-shirt. He made a new t-shirt. I want Nintendo the t-shirt. has made controlling the game simpler, meaning you can further concentrate on the core essence of Pikmin gameplay. We call it Dan Dori. In okay, Japanese. I'm going to pause right there because I pretty much know what he says after that. He said they're going to make controlling the game simpler, which in the past for certain like Wii games back in the day just meant ruining a game with motion controls, but I don't I think they're past that and Pikmin was better with motion controls in my opinion. But making the game simpler to control so they can focus more on the core elements of strategy and managing Pikmin is basically what he says after this, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not gonna... I don't think I'm gonna watch past this because I do believe that's the end of the trailer after he finishes saying this. But that is just... yeah, that's the end. That is just so awesome to me. Like, they're saying we're gonna cut away the difficulty of the controls. Maybe that even implies that they're gonna get rid of some of the more gimmicky aspects once again, the bottom of the screen here, we got a red Pikmin, a blue Pikmin, and a yellow Pikmin. No other Pikmin types, no fluff, no complicated controls. 
simplifying it down to strategy and completing the game's goals. And I think that is just a wonderful thing. I don't think I could ask for a better thing to provide for the Pikmin series. I can't wait to see the human stuff. I can't wait to see how the Pikmin types turn out. I'm excited for the new perspective. I'm excited for the controls. And I'm excited to see how the game is put together, to see how intellectual it is, and all the cool level design changes and strategy broadenings <laughs> that he's adding to this game. He and his team. Excuse me, I don't know how involved he is in the production of Pikmin 4. Okay, I guess that's going to about wrap it up. I believe that's the end of the trailer. Thank you very, very much for being here. I'm really sorry I hope you're for um, the lack of editing quality in this video and me bumping the table. It's not very professional, I know, but I just wanted to give you guys my full broken down thoughts on the Pikmin 4 trailer, bit by bit, going through it. And also, it's a pretty funny video title, in my opinion. Okay, thanks. Have a great day. I'll end it now, and see you soon.